We don't have an opening bit this week. <laughs> it's a complete... <laughs> it's a breakdown of our normal structure. Because <laughs> we're talking about breakdown. I don't remember how the song goes. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sadie dun, Hawkins. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you ready for a hardcore breakdown? Dun, 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 dun. Gonna like really punch the floor. Come on. Oh, wow. Gonna do some real mosh moves. You were like kick thrashing your violently. Yeah, so I think we're gonna do our thrashing breakdown. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounded like you said. Yes. <laughs> so we're back. We're talking this week about breakdown. And, oh, you know, I didn't, last week I said, we're probably not doing Breakdown next week, and it's totally what we're doing. <laughs> this has been kind of a lazy week. We were like, what's the path of least resistance? <laughs> Jessica's been sick. She does not have COVID. No. Jessica's been sick, and she called Actually, her doctor. I had a, yeah, I had a COVID test. It came back negative, so yes. woo! Yeah, it's good for Jessica. <laughs> uh, a, a, who knows about me? I didn't get tested. <laughs> but... Jessica's been sick, like, all week, and she called her doctor, and he's like, it's probably not COVID, but, like, we have to send you for a test. Yeah. So that was fun. It's like we drove into the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> we, it was we like drove. a zombie apocalypse. You drive we through were being the cones, processed, and, yeah, yeah, you have the people in, like, the suits with the, the face shield and And these, like, and stuff. trailers yeah. that have been yeah. fitted into this parking lot. And one is, like, offices yeah, one is, like, dirty labs. side and, like, hazardous <laughs> side, and the other is, like, clean, and it just says clean on it. Yeah. Mm. So we decided to choose the path of least resistance, and we're like, you know, we did VeggieTales last week, and obviously the second... Veggie Tales related song is Breakdown because Larry the Cucumber covers it. And then we were like, and originally I was thinking we'd save more Veggie Tales talk for down the line, but I'm like, <sighs> let's just do it. Let's just get the whole Veggie Tales thing out of the way. I don't know why, but I thought you said Larry the Cable Guy at first. <laughs> oh, I did tweet at some point <laughs> after we did our last episode. <laughs> I you, realized you tweeted at some point since the last episode. Are you sure or, about once that? Once or twice for my 25 accounts. <laughs> at some point after we talked about the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything, it occurred to me, because I hadn't wa- thought about or watched VeggieTales in like 15 years before last week. So it occurred to me that Larry the Cucumber is just, well, or, or the other way around, Mater the Truck from Cars is just Larry the Cucumber. And he's voiced by Larry the Cable Guy. It's a giant ripoff. Not, not Larry the Cucumber, Mater the Truck. That's correct. Yeah. I'm saying Mater the Truck from Cars, Yes, is who as a character yeah. is a ripoff of Larry the Cucumber, he is voiced by Larry the Cable Guy. Wow. It's just a massive ripoff. And I completely forgot to mention how, and I thought of this as well, you know that whole Pickle Rick thing from Rick and Morty? You heard of that? Not really, but kind of. I mean, I've of, seen the merchandise around. Right. Rick turns himself into a pickle for no reason, and then he has to survive as a pickle in the sewers and stuff. I was like, Pickle What's Rick. What's a pickle doing in the sewers? He gets knocked into the sewer. I don't know. Oh, all right. He, I was like, Pickle Rick is just a ripoff of Larry the Cucumber. And this, I haven't watched this season of Rick and Morty at all, but the VeggieTales showed up at one point, like in the season premiere of Rick and Morty. But in what? Like, <laughs> Wait, really? There's a joke. The, ep- the first, I have not watched the episode, but I had to watch this clip because of all the talk about it. The episode ends with them like praying to Jesus to help them, but in a non-ironic way. Like, it's ironic that they're doing it, uh-huh. but it's not like... If, at least in the clip I saw, like, they're genuinely praying to Jesus Christ and, okay. like, thanking him for saving their souls. And then, like, the villain gets upset that they're doing that because it's out of character for them. And mm-hmm. then, like, all of these Christian characters show up to congratulate them, including the VeggieTales. But my theory is that they realize Pickle Rick was a ripoff of Layer the Cucumber and Big Idea successfully sued 
uh, Adult Swim and out of court the settlement was Rick and Morty have to become born again. And yet we haven't heard anything about this like on the internets or anything. It's I then they kept it low key so the media didn't find out. That veggie tail pockets and their power <laughs> runs deep. So and um yeah, so I actually have a bunch of... It's part of the reason we did this, uh, we decided to do Breakdown so we can talk about VeggieTales again because we're going to listen to the Larry the Cucumber right, cover of this. because you have, like, wrap-up VeggieTales things you And that's the other about. thing is that there's a bunch of corrections I have from last week. Oh, wow. So before we get into voicemails, our top of the show business is me giving... Did you get a bunch of, like, angry um, no. VeggieTale <laughs> stands coming at you? No. But I had after, it was like in the editing of the episode and like posting it and researching it. I'm like, oh, there's a bunch of research we could have done about the song itself from the VeggieTales world. Because like the VeggieTales people have done tons of interviews describing the song and other songs. So there's like a VeggieTale wiki, (laughs) like a VeggieTales wiki, wiki wikia. And so what you're saying is that I really failed in my deep dive last week. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything VeggieTales wiki didn't come up in your deep dive. No. I feel like we stayed mostly relevant to the discussion. We just didn't go into you know, the deeper dive of yeah. the actual song in the VeggieTales world. And I didn't actually put the words VeggieTales in any of my searches. I just stuck to Reliant K. So that's right. probably why it, it, nothing popped up. So the first thing I wanted to mention is that this song, I kept talking about how this, how sorry, we're talking about last week right now. We're wrapping up Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. I kept talking last week about how Pirates That Don't Do Anything was recorded for the Jonah movie, which is true, but it was also on the Veggie Rocks compilation, which was like, a, and I forgot about this because I don't think I ever owned this, but there was a compilation. How dare you, Danny? That is such a significant detail. There was a compilation release, released in 2004 oh, yeah, called I've Veggie seen that Rocks. Before. And uh, Audio Adrenaline, Newsboys, OC Supertones, Reliant K, Sanctus Real, Skillet, uh, Super Chick, Tate, they all do covers of, of, of VeggieTales songs. So Rebecca St. James does the theme song. Uh, Newsboys do Belly of the Whale. Super Chick does the Water Buffalo song. Audio Adrenaline <laughs> does the Hairbrush song. Yeah, I I am. Um, I think that when I bought this song on iTunes back in the day, that 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 cover was oh the, that was the cover that was the version you that didn't I have had. the yeah. single cover. No, you I bought think it. I had that. You bought it as a sing, as a track off of the Veggie Rocks cover. I believe so. Okay, so I forgot to mention that in the discussion of the thing because I think that's relevant. I never owned that CD, like I said, but more stuff I saw attributed this song to being a part of that compilation than saying it's like if you go to the pirates who don't do anything wikipedia page like the official wikipedia page for the song the pirates who don't do anything they don't even mention the jonah movie but i'm like i swear that's what it was recorded for but then they say it was released on the veggie rocks compilation well anyway you had questions about like what's the deal with this song in general and like why you know why do the pirates go to boston why do they never go to boston in the fall Mm -hmm. and why do they never go to buffalo or whatever other places because then we heard that that ren fair band (laughs) cover the song and they had to pick more (laughs) eras that was awesome (laughs) because america didn't exist right in the proper time of those kind of pirates they had Mm -hmm. to like pick places that actually existed like moscow and paris and spain and stuff well the explanation for the song that we could have looked up, but I didn't. <laughs> is uh, let me get this on the f- oh, f- I always say Wikia, but the website now is Fandom, the Fandom Wiki. Okay. Like it used to be Wikia, right? But now it's the f- it's Fandom.com. So the Fandom.com page for the song "The Pirates Who Don't Do Anything" explains that the guy who wrote it, and I want to get this information right, but basically it was about how he used to tour with some some group, and he would breeze into a town to do this tour. And then he have to breeze out, and he never got to do anything in those towns. Right. So, uh, oh, so, okay. So Mike Naraki, who I guess is one of the VeggieTales guys, came up with the song while taking business trips and thinking about he never did anything in those places. He also stated this was when he used to work as the sound man for the Continental Singers and never being at Boston during the fall. This is because the tour was going to be in that said area. So That sounds like a real raucous group right there. 
Yeah. <laughs> they should go on tour with Reliant K. Get one of those real nostalgic <laughs> tours going. So I thought that was relevant and that would have been good to mention in the episode. And then... Uh, so the last two corrections I have, or additions from last week, is that um, I kept talking about how the... Because I hadn't really fully researched the Veggie Tales, or I just watched a couple of clips on YouTube. Mm-hmm. But it turned out that this song was not in just a regular episode of Veggie Tales from the time. They put out a compilation of just the songs on tape, like how Disney does. Mm. Disney does the sing along tapes. Right. So Veggie Tales was so like this wasn't even an episode? It it was an original song in a compilation tape of all of the song of mo- oh. many of the songs up to that point. And this was the only original song, like un- previously unreleased song. Huh. So Whereas the normal format, like I talked about last week, was half the episode, silly song, second half of the episode. This was a bunch of silly songs that you'd already seen on other tapes, and then the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. And it was like tape number seven or something. Also, I kept talking, and I kept talking about how VeggieTales, like, I was like, VeggieTales probably started around 98 or something. It turned mm-hmm. out the first one was like 94. And again, I didn't write it down but like it was like 94 Whoa, or something like real? that like it came like the first veggie tales tape came out before toy story one. Oh my gosh that's crazy and there was probably like a long time between productions. i never heard of it yeah that's so weird but i feel like it didn't really get legs until like 2000 until like yeah. other christian until it had kind of cemented cemented itself as something that both adults and kids liked right like i mentioned last week the muppets or something yeah and you had Christian adult contemporary artists covering VeggieTales songs <laughs> that it, like it actually took off in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Gotcha. And the last correction is not VeggieTales specific, but that clip that we talked about where Christopher Walken came out on stage with a bunch of kids and sang the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. Yeah. And how that video only had like, for, like I can't remember, like very few views, like less than 100 or something like that. I looked into it, and they say in the description that it was Camp Hole in the Wall. And we were speculating, like, is this Beverly Hills, or is this, like, Northern California? Mm-hmm. It turns out it was Connecticut. And it, prob- and, and, um, it was... And because there was so much production value in this drama right. camp stage, and Christopher Walken is there for the heck of it, mm-hmm. just to surprise the parents and, like, delight the kids there. It turns out Camp Hole in the Wall is specifically, like, a drama camp or an arts camp for children with severe illnesses. Mm. So that's, it's, like, a basically, like, a Make-A-Wish style arts camp for oh, kids really nice. who, like, n- I don't think it said they necessarily had to have potentially you know fatal diseases but they could have Mm -hmm. that or they have cancer and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. i guess that makes sense why christopher walken was just there Mm -hmm. to surprise the parents who were there that night and perform with the kids is because that's what it was we were speculating like does he give it donate his time and money to this place because maybe he has like a grandkid or a kid that i don't even know if christopher walken has children (laughs) to be honest but it turns out it's because it's a, it's a charity. It was like a charity drama camp. That's great. And it was super cool. And I was like, I wish I knew that. I wish yeah, I had yeah. gone the extra mile to Google what is Camp Hole in the Wall before we did the episode. <laughs> like I said, the last couple weeks have been the easiest path possible. <laughs> possible. <laughs> so that's all my follow-up from VeggieTales last week. Nice. Then we have a voicemail from Daniel. And I feel super bad because, like, First, we were making fun of him for oh, his no. magnified pod jokes, oh, no. so he stopped those. And I'm like, no, I didn't really want you to... I don't really want Daniel to think we were upset about the magnified pod references. That is just a joke. Please continue to do those if you feel like it. Like, we think that's hilarious. But then <laughs> he left his shortest voicemail ever because oh, he was... Oh, no! From, and I, we weren't, like, being... We love that anyone calls. Yes. And we like, love any voicemail. Yeah, and Brady and David Ketch have both stopped calling that much like what's up like i think we're chasing people away we're like these voicemails aren't good enough (laughs) give us quality (laughs) no we love anyone that calls and wants to it's like we're not gonna call and be heckled anymore (laughs) like i know that magnified pod picks and chooses their voicemails because i've left many voicemails that have never made it to the show how dare you magnified pod (laughs) but we at this point want to air every voicemail we get because we're grateful to anyone so if you want to leave Five minutes of voicemails, it's perfectly fine with us. Yeah, we're not like those ungrateful suckers (laughs) over at Magnified Pod. (laughs) Exactly. 
<laughs> so here, Daniel leaves a 41 second voicemail talking about our avatar little discussion in the middle of Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. Oh no, did we offend him? Is that his favorite movie? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Hey, it's Daniel. I promise I'm going to leave a short voicemail today. Uh, you mentioned something about Avatar, like not really being uh, copied or, you know, ripped off um, in the time since it's been out. Um, I wonder if that is because, like, it itself kind of copied the story of, like, Pocahontas, or at least the Disney version of it. Um, I've never actually seen Avatar, so I can't really speak to that, but I've seen that a bunch in, like, memes and, like, people breaking down the plots of each movie. So maybe that's why nobody bothered, because they would ultimately just be copying uh, Pocahontas. I don't know. You guys are the film people. Anyway, have a good one. See, Daniel didn't even see it. How is that the top grossing movie of all time? Right. It makes absolutely no sense. And I'm just more surprised that like nobody aesthetically ripped it off. Like no one made any like other high tech space action movies of that kind. Right. Like obviously there's science fiction and there's Star Wars ripoffs, but to make make like a military movie in space or make because a movie it was about just someone Fern meeting, Gully. Yeah. Or make. Yeah, or make some sort of movie about a guy who meets friendly aliens on a planet. Like I hadn't made no like, one the takes Pocahontas even any connection, element. but yeah, right, totally. I mean, I remember. Uh, yeah, now that he says that, I remember the Pocahontas thing at the time when yeah. Avatar came out. Everyone was saying this is just Pocahontas or Fern Gully or Dances with Wolves in space. But then nobody takes any of those surface level Avatar elements and rips those off because there have been so many ripoffs of Terminator and so many ripoffs of Aliens. And so, no Titanic ripoffs, though. No, there've been ton of Titanic Have ripoffs. There been a ton of yeah, Titanic like Titanic ripoffs? two, and all of these like straight to video fake Titanic. You know, like oh, cheap I Titanic. Remember that one. There were so many Titanic. There were there were Titanic oh, movies. There before. had to be like an Avatar mockbuster then of the time. They've just gotten buried in a vault somewhere. Maybe. But Disney bought them so that they could put it, lock them away in the vault, like like the 20th Century Fox catalog, or like Nintendo did for the Mario porn. <laughs> oh, no. Do you know about that? No. In the 80s. Oh wait, we we watched segments of this. There's porn without porn, right? Uh, like a YouTube on thing. YouTube. Yeah. Somebody takes like cheesy 80s porn and cuts the sex out, so yeah. you just get like. The story, the actual story, yeah. and like the eightiesness of it. It's good stuff. And yeah, we, it was like Ron Jeremy was Mario, right? Yeah. Well, Nintendo actually bought the rights to that porn parody. Oh wow! The, to that. Oh, so you're saying that now, so that they could bury it in their vault and it would oh. never see the light of day. Wow. So you're just saying that if we went to like YouTube, we could not see the porn without porn of that anymore? I mean, maybe it's only up for a short amount of time, but no, they bought it back then. Like they bought oh, it at okay. the time. They oh. like it was real. I I just saw this on some like I follow multiple video game channels, so this is just one of those like. So if you paid like eighty dollars for your VHS tape <laughs> in the first week, you got it, but like nobody else did. I think it's something like that. Yeah. Not I that I know really how much know. VHS porn <laughs> costs. This is just a guess based on seeing like. Well, we have a VHS collection of like yeah. regular of not of just of like movies. <laughs> And because we, yeah, and because we get our VHS collection from all kinds of places, sometimes they have price tags on yeah, them. Yeah, the and like original price tags original are still price tags on when them. They were sold at like Bradley's in like 1987, right? Or Tower Records like, or, or Tower whatever. Records, and it says and, like eighty dollars yeah. for a new movie. And like nowadays, if you go into like a CVS and you see the Blu-rays on the shelf, and the Blu-rays are like fifty bucks for like you know star Wars, star trek into darkness and you're like who's going to who's going to pay 50 bucks yeah. for star trek into darkness well someone was paying 80 dollars at tower video yeah. for suburbia we have a couple that are like 69.99 like oh not suburbia what's the name oh, what's that tom hanks horror movie the burbs the burbs suburbia is the Roger That's Corman the, the punk um, movie Oh, wasn't that a... Oh, no, the, I'm thinking about Disturbia is the one with Shia LaBeouf. Wait, <laughs> right. did that have Shia LaBeouf in it? It did, yeah. It did, yeah. Welcome to Cinema Cataclysm <laughs> with Jess and Danny. <laughs> so we have another voicemail, and this is from Beatrice in Orlando, and oh, she's nice. going to talk about Breakdown. Oh, oh but, good. But before we do that, because that'll get us into our talk about this week's episode, last week... I was talking about Rave DJ. Yes. And I've been getting obsessed with this site because <laughs> David Park discovered it on Jimmy Pod and they will like 
it's like every week if they can they will take the jimmy Eat world song they're talking about that week and ma- use rave dj to mash it up with some other like tonally similar song and as i mentioned last week rave dj is this site where you type in two songs and it makes you a mashup and i think some sort of ai thing analyzes i think it analyzes the this is my guess total guess on how this is done but i think it analyzes the waveform of the two songs you pick and it probably finds the shortest peaks and says okay those are the drum beats and then i think it chops the song into sections each song into sections and then matches them up so it'll speed up or slow down one of the songs and then ultimately like everything you do in rave dj will be different sometimes it will use the whole song and sometimes it will chop both songs into like tiny pieces and just kind of lay them out most of the time when i put something in rave dj it does not work out right it's like horrible inharmonious like the beats are don't match like it's awful right like four out of five don't work at all but occasionally i get on a couple of good ones and so i i did (laughs) I did, after we recorded last week, while I was waiting for things to, while I was waiting for things to export, while I was editing the Pirates of Don't Do Anything episode, I put together Right Said Fred's I'm Too Sexy. I love this so much. (laughs) I love this so much. Did you put it on your SoundCloud? I put it on the MXPX memes SoundCloud. (laughs) So I mixed up. Now if you get like, if you get a tweet that gets like at least 11 likes, you can be like, underneath it like wow i didn't expect this to take off check out my soundcloud and people can go listen to this exactly so i mixed together right said fred's i'm too sexy and be my escape this is my favorite thing ever this is my favorite thing ever there was only like one like from me on this tweet that you tweeted out because i think you did it at like midnight or something and we're on the west coast and i'm like danny nobody's gonna see this and it's on our sadie hawkins pod youtube channel oh good so here's I'm going to just play a little bit of it. And I I swear, (laughs) this is so good. So it took both songs and it edited them down to two minutes and 35 seconds. And it it created this. This is what Rave DJ created when I typed in those two songs. It was just picking up. What are you doing? Are you want to keep going? Heck yeah. I'm doing the th- I'm holding my headphones with one hand and then like doing like the scratch move with the other. Like your I'm NXPX. Exactly. <laughs> Deep cut reference. Okay, here's a little bit more of it. almost wish we were club kids just so we could go and like play this at a club and be like dancing to I it. wish I was a DJ at a club and I would do like dance mix of like oh like emo night like you know there's emo night <laughs> yes. we've been wanting to go but we haven't been yet and uh this is one of the reasons why I know my phone right, is guess, always listening right because we have talked about emo, we talked about really early episodes on this podcast we talked about emo night yes pour yourself I'm pouring water I'm peeing at the table <laughs> water don't you lie to the <laughs> to the listeners <laughs> i'm drinking suntory whiskey for relaxing times it's suntory times <laughs> i bought this japan i was just we were at costco and i was like this is a japanese whiskey i'll check it out you know it's costco it's cheaper and then we told a friend of ours who was coming over to watch a movie we've all had two we all have he both he and jessica had recent covid tests i'm the only one who didn't have a covid test and um everyone came out negative so he came over for a movie and I was like, oh, look, I bought a Japanese whiskey. And he's like, that's the whiskey from Lost in Translation. I'm like, oh, okay. And then we, I watched that scene. 
It's good stuff. Classic. So you're saying if you're a club kid, no, no, you're saying emo night. Oh, how yeah. How your phone listens to you. Yeah, because all of a sudden I started getting Instagram ads. Now, I've never looked up emo night before or anything. Right. I had, those are not words I have searched for. All of a sudden, Instagram starts giving me these like emo night is for lovers shirts, like uh, mm-hmm. ads. And I'm like, whoa what and i screen capped it and i think i tweeted at the podcast like honestly probably like almost a year ago now that was like well i want to make more the phone is listening i want to make more mashups and if i can i i tried to do like mash i don't have the right software for it i never have but i tried to do mashups on my own years ago and i like i would get them working for like a couple of seconds and then they totally be off because i didn't do the times correctly but if I can learn to do get a better software and really do mashups and use this rave DJ as like a guide or use some of those tracks, maybe we do a bunch of like emo and pop punk adjacent music mixed with like 90s dance music and hip hop. I love it so much. And then we'll make like... We should have like a Sadie Hawkins pod pool party. <laughs> yes. Be good stuff. <laughs> and I made one other rave DJ today and I already shared it on Twitter, but I'm going to talk about that next week. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, if you go look at it, it's, it's mixed with the cha cha slide. I won't spoil <laughs> which Relian K song I added in unless you want to go look online right now. I keep thinking because you had me listen to it like five times today that that's the song we're doing, and I keep getting confused and thinking <laughs> that that is the song we're doing this week. No, we're doing breakdown. That's right. Da, 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 breakdown. We're doing the classic easy core song breakdown. Which, as I mentioned before, Beatrice from Orlando is going to discuss. Hey, it's Beatrice from Orlando, Florida. Um, I heard you guys were doing breakdown today. Um, I just wanted to call and say that I kind of have this weird, I don't know if it's ironic, coincidental, I guess I'll say, story about the song. So, a few months back, I was doing algebra homework and... I was, like, super stressed out about it because, like, I'm horrible at, at algebra. I don't get why my school wanted to put me there. But So I was doing, like, all the assignments, and I stayed up until, like, midnight or, like, midnight, like, 1230, basically, until so I finally finished. And in the middle of that, I was playing um, Anatomy on Shuffle because, like, I don't have Spotify premium, so I can't really play it in the exact order I want. But, um... I was just putting the album on shuffle so I wouldn't like just gaze off because that happens to me a lot when I do that. So I put music on the player so that I could just like keep my mind on one thing. And so basically as I was listening to that and as I was having a mental breakdown basically, um, the song breakdown comes on as I'm crying <laughs> and I just start bursting laughing. It's crazy. Like um where I just start laughing and just like start randomly parodying the song. I don't even remember how my parody went, but I just started saying like, break down, I'm having a mental breakdown. And then like, yeah, it went on from there. And it just made me like love the band even more because it was like, wow, they actually have the power of just like completely like erasing my tears and just like, <laughs> just making me laugh about the situation as much as I hate math. So... I thought that was a pretty weird story. <laughs> but yeah, sorry this voice not so long. Um, okay, bye. Again, it's fine if the voicemails are long. I don't mind. I do cut down people's voicemails. I don't ever... We don't skip anyone's voicemails if we can help it. But I do, like, cut them down and stuff to fit them in easier. But anyway, that's an amazing story. I love that it. Is. That's just, like, like some divine intervention right there. <laughs> Which is nice because we don't actually have a ton of great things to say about this song (laughs) as we'll get into it. This is not a big hit for Jessica or I. Actually, we'll talk about it. I used to really love this song and it doesn't impress me as much compared to Reliant K's discography that comes later. That don't impress you much? No, it doesn't. That classic (laughs) Reliant K song. I didn't realize that, like, with Spotify Premium, it was like a oh, Pandora yeah. kind of thing, almost. Sort of, because yeah. I have Spotify. You have sound like you have a little bit more control. Right, than... I have Spotify. And sometimes when I forget, like, if the credit card changes or something, <laughs> I used to only do Spotify off of um, off of gift cards. I don't know why. Oh, because if you if because if I bought gift card if I <laughs> if I bought 
<laughs> with if I use my Target credit card at Target oh, and dear. bought a Spotify gift card, I would get five percent off the Spotify gift card. Because like direct cash value gift cards were not discounted at Target. But like ones for like increments, like one month of this or one year of this service, you would get your 5% discount at Target on your Target card to buy those gift cards. So I get life hack. Yes, life hack. So I would use my Target or use our Target card to get Spotify gift cards and I would load up for six months. And then like if it's if I forgot to reload for at the end of six months, I would suddenly get pushed back to Spotify premium and it might take me some time to get the Target. And I'd be stuck with Spotify non-premium. And yeah, it's like Pandora, but Pandora is like you could only pick an artist or a genre, right? I haven't used Pandora in forever. I barely ever liked Pandora. Yeah, it was like you could pick a song or a style, a style or, a mood. or a mood or like an artist or yeah, whatever. And even if you picked an artist, it would pick other artists like that artist. Right. Um, no, yeah, Spotify premium, Spotify non-premium, it lets you, at least lets you pick an album or only an artist and it'll play only that artist but then you can't control which ones play and if you Mm -hmm. skip more than six times just like pandora it it stops you from skipping for an hour but yeah that's a nice fun story so yeah breakdown (laughs) so i used to really love this song and we talked about this story somewhere else on the podcast but um this song is on the 2080 ADD, which we'll talk about a little bit that version on that EP later. But because this was on the 2000 ADD EP and it was not and 2000 ADD promoted the self-titled album, but 2000 but Breakdown is not on the self-titled album. So this song was released before, you know, well over a year before it was eventually on Anatomy. I one time April, don't start barking. <laughs> I one time at an early Reliant K show in like 2000, 2001, wanted to be the cool guy that (laughs) shouted out a song that's not on a current album. And obviously the only one I know, because it was the only B-side in Reliant K's catalog at that point, was Breakdown being on the 2080 DEP. So at Soul Fest or something, I said, play Breakdown. <laughs> play Breakdown. They're like, they're like, oh yeah, we could, oh, we could play. And they weren't, it wasn't in the set list and they squeezed it in the set list that day for me. And it was awesome because I wanted to be this like dorky kid who requests a song. Because, you know, it had happened. Now, Dan, did the crowd react the same way the crowd reacts in the live 2080 <laughs> Let's version? Let's talk about it now. <laughs> I guess chronologically, this makes sense in terms of release. So yeah, so this song first comes out... Trickery. Trickery. So this song first comes out on the 2080D EP, which came out before, which I realize now, you know, definitely came out before the self-titled. Right. It was in promotion of the Um, self-titled. I had it out here on the table earlier today. I moved it around somewhere because we set off bug bombs earlier and I had to like hide everything. (laughs) It's summer. Bugs are coming out to hang out. Here we go. Oh, do you think that we could still email Reliant K Manager at AOL.com? <laughs> Let's give it a Ooh, try. or for booking information, we have Jay Risden at Davdon.com. Right. Nice. So, yeah, so this song is on. So, I, I definitely had the Reliant K self titled full length album first. And then I retroactively went back and got the EP, which had come out before the self-titled. And Breakdown's on there. And yeah, it's copyright called... copyright 2000. Right. And it's called Breakdown Live. And at the time, I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> I've seen Reliant K twice now, and the crowd is only like 10 to maybe 40 people. <laughs> And we've seen that footage in Troy, Michigan with Steven on drums, because I only ever saw Dave on drums. Right. We've seen that footage with Steven on drums in Troy, where there's like... The kids do not kids, care. And they're sitting at church tables, barely paying attention. So then my question is, why does the first version of Breakdown ever released to the world is called Breakdown Live, and it sounds like this. You guys got any water over here? It's a little dry, huh? But you know, for you guys, we'll go all night if you need. 
shenanigans. <laughs> you know, 2000 Reliant K playing yeah. in stadiums to thousands of screaming Like this girls. had to be, allegedly, this would have had to have been recorded before, whenever this EP came out. I mean, the album came out on April 25th, 2000. So this EP, let's say, came out in, let's say it came out in February of 2000. So this would have been like 1999, allegedly. No, I think what we have here is a reverse version of the Mark, Tom, and Travis show controversy. Because with Blink-182's live album, the big controversy is that, like, it's basically a studio album that they put, you know... Well, actually, it wouldn't be reversed then. (laughs) No, this was absolutely... Because the thing is, is that also, if you listen to this song played, like, live from this time, which we have one live video later. We have one live from the Troy concert. From the the Troy Michigan concert where no one's paying attention. Exactly. No one is like... First of all, no one's getting that hype. Second of all... No one's cheering when this song starts. Because this song wasn't available anywhere. So basically... And they didn't play it like this. This no. sounds way too good for how they played live at the time. So I misrepresented, as I was trying to think of it, the Blink-182 live album controversy. But basically, like, they recorded a tour after Anima of the State was released. And the belief is that, and there might actually be proof of this now. I don't won't pay that close attention to it over the last 20 years. But that they went in and they overdubbed some guitars and stuff. So they were like... The, so that when you hear the crowd, it really is the crowd, and you hear the banter. That stuff's really recorded live, and for the most part, the tracks on that live CD are real. But they were like, oh, we'll go into the studio, and we'll overdub, and we'll fix some of this guitar, you know? Right. Well, in this case, I think what you... I, I believe what you have is a rough studio recording, or a live-in-studio recording, or a, like, sound check recording, like, mm-hmm. technically live where they mess around and pretend they're playing for a giant auditorium of girls screaming for Breakdown, a song that has never been released to the public in any form. Um, So at the time, I kind of believed it, even though I was like kind of weird. When this EP came out, I was like, oh, do they have like a big following wherever they're from? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I didn't understand. But then in hindsight, then in hindsight, I'm like, no, this is sweetened, phony live this is a sweet and phony yeah. live track especially because when you look at the ep it does it doesn't even say like breakdown live recorded at blah 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 right like there is even the hypothetical of you know there are nobody banned at that point the self-titles not out they are a nobody band i'm sorry right. i love relying k but at that point they're nobody yeah and what if they're opening for toby mac one night because they've just been signed to goatee and he's like Come but you on down still would not get this this reaction. reaction from the audience we've been to big stadium shows for different artists for no opening. one cheers like this for the opening <laughs> band no. no one so i kind of realized in hindsight that absolutely this is fake and they probably weren't expecting anyone sort of in the know maybe they were expecting to fool some Christian kids who never really went to a real concert. I had been to real concerts by that point, even though I was being partially tricked. I had seen Foo Fighters and Green Day in my life, and I like knew what real concerts were like. But then the live track ends like this. Everyone buy a t-shirt, sign the mailing list. We love you. Yeah, nobody does that. They don't really do that. <laughs> so maybe it is just a tongue-in-cheek I kind think of it was thing. meant as a tongue-in-cheek yeah. thing for people who act. But I think, I theorize <laughs> that they were trying to trick sheltered Christian kids who had never really been to a concert and would think, I've got a CD in my hand. This must be a big band. Because they wouldn't be on CD unless they were a big band. Right. I'm holding the CD right now and like shaking it like it's a precious treasure. Yes. So I think that's the I think that's like the thing they were going for without being totally misleading. I th- believe that's the idea they were going for. However, I will also say if you if I could hear this recording without the fake screams and yells, this might be a superior recording to. The Anatomy of Tongue in Cheek version. Yeah, this song definitely sounds like 
self-titled or even demo era it definitely is it has a very immature sound to it in the in you know the lyrics in just the music itself um the composition of the song there's a lot of parts of the song that just do not do it for me Mm -hmm. um this song is definitely written by without actually knowing for certain with no particular interview to confirm it all evidence leads to this is a song that Matt Thiessen wrote when he was 16. Mm-hmm. Like of those songs like Marilyn Manson and K Car. Yeah. Because they performed this at that Troy, Michigan show that exists on YouTube, which came out before the self titled was released. That means the song existed before the self titled, right? Um, it's got that sound. It sounds very similar to K Car. Mm-hmm. It does. And my theory is that, and it's not, it's not on the All Work and No Play demo. But my theory is that this song is a little too close. It's a little too parallel to K Car musically and thematically. Because both K Car and Breakdown are about metaphors and similes in which a car represents your walk with Christ. Right. So I think that they were like, we've got this song that is different enough from K Car, but to put it on the same CD as K Car would be pointing yeah. out that it's kind of. Yeah. You know, and self- also, you don't want to have three car songs right. on one album because when your are band like, is already named after, after a, car. a car, yeah, because <laughs> people like, oh, here's a car, car band. band. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they held this song off for Anatomy, and I love, I really did, seriously love this song for many years. But you're right, it is, it is a first, it is an original wave. Matt Thiessen teenager in his bedroom song and it feels like that when you hear it in hindsight and when you compare it to the sort of more genius songs of later years and when you even compare it to some of the more the really contemporary songs that are on anatomy meaning songs that were written like for anatomy or had slightly more mature concepts than the self-titled because in that one year between the self-titled and anatomy they grew Hugely, I would say, Mm -hmm. between production and writing and lyrics. To sort of throw it back to Breakdown, it sort of fit in a little bit because they hadn't... Only in hindsight do I say that self-titled and anatomy had this giant leap in quality Mm -hmm. and in all those ways. But when you're living in it and you've only got these two CDs... They're not too far apart. There's, there's, they're just shades of slightly different color. So breakdown kind of fits in with anatomy. But then when you look at the whole scope of Reliant K, there is an immature. It's a perfectly serviceable pop punk pop rock song, but there is a certain like lacking element to the melody of breakdown. The intro to this to me sounds like High of Seventy Five. Yeah. A l- of, like a lot because Dan- Danny started playing it in the car earlier and I started singing <laughs> high of 75 to it because I knew we were playing breakdown but I was like oh wait this intro sounds so similar to high of 75 right so basically like this song is like and you know what K car I would say is way more is a more immature song than breakdown but somehow just because it's almost like he wrote K car and I don't know maybe he wrote breakdown first we have no proof to this but I'm just saying hypothetically I would imagine he wrote K car first and he's like, that song's fun and all, but I can improve it a little bit more and write Breakdown. And it was, I would say, Breakdown is a slightly more improved, just slight, a couple steps up from K-Car in terms of slightly more mature songwriting, more mature like ideas on the guitar and stuff. Like, Because K-Car is such a loose, teenage, crappy pop punk song. Right. Whereas Breakdown, at least, it has a certain... like guitar thing it just has a certain thing going that's a little bit more mature than the self-titled but there's just something about it that i just find lacking and the number one thing that i find that drew me away from this song in hindsight now in 2020 whereas i loved this song in the early 2000s what draws me away from it now is it's too long it is. It's, it's almost long. four minutes. It's three minutes and 45 seconds. And that first chorus feels so shoehorned in. It's like he's like, he can't even take a breath between the, <laughs> like, the whatever verse he's on and the chorus. Right. Like, it just feels so, like, crammed together. Yeah. And I've joked about it on this show many times already. But 
it was years later that I realized, oh, the song, it's like, a, it, there's like three, th- he's talking about a, an emotional breakdown, and he's talking about the breakdown of his car, and he's talking about the breakdown of his faith in Christ, and there's a musical breakdown in the song. So there's, it's like, a, there's like four things going on. Which, which is really clever. It's, it's super clever. Maybe it's a little too much, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's, Take just it's two there. things. Yeah. Like, go, do the two things really well. It's like when you go to a restaurant and the menu has too much stuff and you're like, you're not doing anything well because you're doing a little too much. Like, right. just give me your best stuff and that's it. I've had more time to watch subtitled films this year because of quarantine. Sorry. Just because like, what? Yes. <laughs> I Sorry. swear Choking this goes on, on my thing. tea. <laughs> I've had more time to watch because... Doing because I watch a lot of movies every year because I can watch movies while I work and I can give them actually like a good amount of attention while I work, but I can't watch subtitled movies because I'm doing like a mindless activity, a mindless accounting activity while I'm watching the movie. I can't watch a subtitled movie now, working from home, <laughs> I can watch 20 minutes and then pause and then go back to my work and then press play. Watch 20 more minutes, pause, go back to my work. So I'm actually knocking off some foreign movies that have been on my list for years that I haven't had time for. So I've been watching some, uh, I never say this name right, Ingmar, Ingmar Bergman. Ingmar Bergman. Right. I've been watching more like Criterion artsy movies, but I've been focusing on Ingmar Bergman. I cannot say the name, but you know what I mean. <laughs> You've gotten the Jessica treatment being right. around me all and the Jessica, time. And Jessica, Jessica's the one who wanted at one point us to get through a glass darkly. Yeah. It effed up plot. <laughs> Don't watch it. Can't re- recommend it nope. from a even for even from a ref- even from a liberally reformed Christian podcast. We don't want to recommend it. Nope. But beautiful looking movie. Yes. Um point is I watched a bunch of his other movies recently and like he's so deep in symbolism that I've realized and sometimes you don't get it and you don't get it the first time you watch it. Right. But I'm like, any frame is supposed to represent like 18 different things at the same time. (laughs) Like this is literally the story of whoever it is, but it also represents like the political party of the blah, 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 enacting the blah, 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 and the whatever. And I'm like, I don't get any of this stuff. Right. (laughs) So when I think of some songs, they made me think of music like Reliant K and other stuff where I would occasionally say, like, this song could be about four or five different things at the same time, but there could be a surface level thing. So the song Breakdown is about four different kinds of breakdowns at the same time. And you could watch an Ingvar Bergman movie and say, this is a little too much. <laughs> There's a little too much going on. Or you could say, this is genius. In the same way that you could listen to any song and realize it's about four or five different you know, not completely related things at the same time and say, like, you just pick or focus on one, but you realize later it's about multiple. So that's my point is that, like, it is kind of interesting that he could be probably 16 or 17 when he wrote this song and write a song that is this multi-layered. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it's a little too much, but it is about multiple kinds of breakdowns. You know what I mean? But that is the kind of thing that you would do at like 16, 17. You would be like, this is going to be mind blowing, man. It's going to be all the thing. Right. Like, look at how deep this is. It's four different meanings. But it definitely could like pass you by. Like, I think my interpretation of music when it's like metaphorical and has a lot of like secret meanings and stuff is that it needs to pass you by the first time you hear it. Mm -hmm. If it's too obvious, then it's too on the nose and it's too like, uh, like it makes you, it gives you chills, like bad chills. Yes. (laughs) And this song is on the cusp. Speaking of things that Danny has ruined for me from from this song. (laughs) What did I ruin? That was what the bit was going to be. That was it. We couldn't remember what the bit was going to be. It was going to be about. I don't uh, know what that lyric is. I have to look it up, but there's that lyric towards in the, in the bridge. And I always say, I always say, let me see. Hold on. I have to look at the lyrics. Okay. I'm on AZ lyrics. This is not always the best, but it says towards the end of the song, it's he'll seek and destroy everything I enjoy, but I won't be the one he takes down. No, I won't break down. We have to discuss this. Is is he talking about the enemy there? (laughs) But anyway, it always sounds like he says, Jessica won't destroy the things that I enjoy or whatever. It always sounds to me like he was saying Jessica before I knew Jessica, before I knew 
my wife who's sitting across from me. I thought maybe he was talking about his sister, but I'm like, I don't really think that's what he's saying. And it says, he'll seek and destroy everything you love and destroy <laughs> everything. You enjoy. You and en- everything that I enjoy. So my point was like, I have a, in our private lives, I have a version <laughs> of this song that I'll sing to Jessica. It's like, I'll say, Jessica, she destroys everything that I enjoy. But then Jessica was like, no, it's more like you destroy the yeah. things that I enjoy, Danny, because yeah. I mock all of her television shows. Please see podcast we had prior to this one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more like Jessica, comma, I destroy everything that you enjoy. So let's actually look at these lyrics now that I'm thinking about it, because I realized I think this is a song about the enemy, oh, no. as my mom likes to put it. Oh, basically saying like Satan and the 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 like the and then when the darkness tries to stop you. Oh what a lousy excuse for a car, one mile to go, but I can't push it that far. I think I've had enough, I think I'm giving up. Saved all my money to buy a new guitar, then I got ripped off by the guy who fixed my car. I think I had enough, I think I'm giving up. Once again, this is the, this. Okay, I've always known those are the lyrics. Now we're getting into the section where I've never really paid attention to the lyrics. Once again, life's thrown me a curve and it blew up right in my face. Once again, life's rattled my nerves. Don't you see that I'm stuck in this place? All because you're giving me a breakdown. Breakdown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuck at the side of the, and this is the bridge. Stuck on the side of the road, emotional overload. Again, this is AZ Lyric, so maybe we'll look up Genius after this. He'll seek and destroy everything that I enjoy, but I won't be the one he takes down. No, I won't break down. So who is seeking and destroying everything that he enjoys? When I think of Christian thought, right. especially in like the American Christian thought that I'm familiar it's with. dad. It's the parents, man. <laughs> parents just don't understand. <laughs> it sounds to me like this is about the enemy and right. like... And when we actually lived in Orlando, of all places, when we lived in Orlando, I used to go, the only time I really ever did this in my life, went to a, um, what do you call it? Like a house, (laughs) small group. Oh, okay. Or home, or home study. Right. Like I never really. Like all churches have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you break off into your small groups or I never really did small groups and except for the time when we lived in Orlando before. Before we were married. <laughs> During college. During college, when I was single and we were either not yet dating or just started dating, I would go to small groups in Orlando. And um, one time there was like this thing where I was like... Then you met the enemy and she no. wore a skirt and you started <laughs> to not go to small groups Oh, dear. no. No, I don't like that. I don't like that idea. No. I'm kidding. No, so... The small group that I went to, I sort of implied, and I didn't really think this exactly. It's so funny. It's probably one of the first, like, reformed, like, (laughs) slightly um, subversive to the main line Christian thought thing that I'd heard at, at that point in my life, where it was like, I implied of, like, the, I didn't say the enemy for sure, but I said, like, this idea of, like, oh, I said this idea of, like, God helping you with little things in life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think they had recently had this thing because they were slightly more, this home group was slightly more like reform in their thinking. And mm-hmm. they were kind of against that whole idea of like, God's there to give you the perfect parking space or like God's there to make sure you get the last steak you wanted at the grocery store sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And they kind of mentioned that to me. And I was like, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> You get what I'm saying? So it's like, Mm -hmm. so they kind of like talked, they kind of talked against the idea of, in in Florida, which is why I'm pointing this out. It's like in Florida, which I think of as a very conservative area. They were like speaking against the idea of the enemy, the enemy, the enemy is there to give you a fender bender, is there to make your car break down. Like rejecting this idea that literally any setback in your regular life happened because of Satan, right? But right now, in that bridge of this song, that's the vibe I'm getting, oh. possibly, that the breakdown of his car, and like I said, this this song... I've had- always ascribed to the idea that everything happens for a reason, because you usually find out later that, like, everything happened for a reason. Right. 
But I, yeah, I mean... You were in that fender bender because if you had been there 20 seconds earlier, it would have been a bigger accident, like that sort of thing. Right. Like, you know, you were you were late to pick up someone because, you know, whatever. Right. I know, absolutely. Because, like, like, I had a lot of trouble in school my whole life, in, like, elementary school and middle school and high school. And a lot of those problems that I had led me to the college that I went to. Like, if I had a perfectly reasonable, fine time in middle school and high school, I probably would have gone to some normal college and I never would have met you, right? So I could say, like, all the crappy teachers that I had in middle school and stuff, they happened for a reason because it led me to the particular college that I went to. And And yet I I had a really great upbringing. (laughs) It did really well in school and I somehow ended up at the same college as you. Well, if we go by that (laughs) whole line of thinking that things happen for a reason, you needed to be a good student so you could get to that college the same time as me. So anyway, the vibe I'm getting from this bridge now that I'm actually reading it for the first time, because I never really understood what he's... The lyrics he was saying when he said, what does genius call it? Genius says this has a verse one, a verse two, a pre-chorus, a chorus, and a bridge, and a chorus. That's quite a weird uh, structure. But yeah, bridge. Uh, Stuck on the side of the road, emotional overload. I guess he can destroy. That's the part that I always said Jesse Jesse can destroy. I never understood he was saying the words, I guess he can destroy Um, everything that I enjoy, but I won't be the one he takes down. No, I won't break down. That sounds like a a sort of like the enemy is against me and my car wreck or my car breaking down is because of the enemy and he won't take me down. I don't know if, I mean, it's hard for me to criticize that line of thinking flat out. But if people just are able to, like, function in their lives, imagining that every setback in their lives is, like, some outside force, and it's Satan trying to stop them because they're a Christian, like, maybe that just keeps them going? (laughs) I don't know. I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. I never thought about this part of the song because I never thought about this song. (laughs) 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 Because even though Anatomy was the first... Uh, we've talked about it before. The first album I ever heard, it was not the first album that I ended up owning. You, yeah. And I kind of picked and, and chose off of the old school iTunes what songs I was going to buy from from this particular album. And so, yeah, Breakdown was, was not one of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't particularly care for, and it's in this, that... You don't care for that melody? That really bugs me. Like, it just grates on my nerves to the point where I'm like, oh, please stop. And, oh, also, there is the gold edition of this. To me, it sounds exactly the same. This is a case of where the gold anatomy of tongue-in-cheek and the original, I can't tell any difference. The only difference, and I listened to them side by side as much as I could, the only difference between the gold version and the original version is that when you transition from maybe it's Maybelline into Breakdown, um, you have, there's a buzzing guitar sound at the end of maybe it's Maybelline that maybe it's Maybelline that leads directly into Breakdown in the non-gold version. In the 26, two, sorry, in the two, in the 2006 gold edition, they fade that buzzing guitar sound at the end of Maybe It's Maybelline down very quickly right before Breakdown starts. So I think if you put your CD, your non-gold Anatomy CD in, and you start Breakdown, you hear a just at the beginning of the track, but you don't hear that on the gold edition. This album is so judgy. (laughs) Well, this isn't judging anyone. He's judging... I think now that I'm looking at this song a little closer so than I ever have. It's not judgy. It's just very in your face. It's very. This is a very. This is a far more Christian album. Now that we've covered more of it in the last year, this is a f- way more Christian album than I ever noticed. Yeah. Yeah. This has more Christian two, early two thousands concepts than I ever. Aside from just believe in Christ, because every Christian album has that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? 
Like, I'm going to listen to a Supertones album, and I'm going to be like, of course this is a super Christian Oh my album. gosh, do you want to talk about In Your Face, Over the Top, <laughs> the but, OC Supertones? But my point is, when I listened to Anatomy of Tongue in Cheek for years, I never assumed it, like, going back to My Way or the Highway to Hell, like, that whole us versus them idea, this, like, thing that's, like, me and Jesus versus the world, like, everyone's out to get me. Yeah, the breakdown... My Way or the Highway definitely is a more in your face because it has that whole damnation thing. This is way more light in terms of that. This is just like when you have little setbacks in life, maybe it's Satan trying to waver your faith. But then the supertones say it always matters that you believe in Christ, even in the dentist chair. So say you're in the dentist chair (laughs) and they accidentally hit a nerve. It really mattered. I listened to Jessica's shrugging and like, uh uh-huh, whatever. I listened to way more Christian punk and rock than you did. Yes, we've we've addressed this. (laughs) Which is so funny in hindsight that I'm always like, CCM, no thank you. But there's so much CCM adjacent (laughs) music that I definitely listened to. Like these first two Reliant K albums and the Supertones albums and Seven Day Jesus and stuff like that. Like I kind of forget. Insiders and Reliant K. All I know. <sighs> and and all those WoW worship CDs my mom had <laughs> from the late 90s. Well, um, yeah, so I guess that's Breakdown. There's a lot more going on in the song than I ever kind of realized. Yeah. And this is close. I always thought this was just like a fun, like, pop punk song that kind of doesn't have too much melody. I always thought this is kind of missing, like, Matt Thiessen's, like, signature really genius sweet melody stuff like this is a little mm-hmm. bit more like you could like it's so funny with the whole breakdown the, the the idea that there's a breakdown in this song and this is like pre easy core where like you have pop punk that has hardcore breakdowns but this is not that kind of breakdown this is like them just like going to the drums and like just singing breakdown oh by the way that mashup you did with uh be my escape and i don't know five finger freddy right what do they fred. call <laughs> right said fred um th- it's it, they almost speed the reliant k song up to like nightcore standards did you notice that it's notice pitched that, a little yeah. higher yeah but yeah so anyway this song has more going on spiritually than i ever realized like, this is actually a slightly more spiritual song than K-Car, where K-Car is, like, kind of quaint. And it's like, hey, this car is awesome, and it's not always the easiest thing to get along with. Like, Christ. And that's about as deep as K-Car goes. Excuse me. This song is, like, eight things at once, and it's like, I'm stuck at the side of the road, and I'm having an emotional overload, and it's because outside bad forces are trying to stop me, and also... I'm breaking down my, I don't know. Well, one thing that popped up in my deep dive this week <laughs> was... Well, no, wait. So, I'm sorry, let me just... I, I'm trailing off because I'm shocked at how much deeper spiritual meaning I'm finding in this song than I really ever thought. I just thought this was a dumb teenager's metaphor for christianity relating to a car like k car but i'm somehow finding that there's like layers and more in this song and i'm not even ready to (laughs) like right experience those concepts happening right now so yeah i feel like i just have to end it there and let's get into your deep dive So Jesus Freak Hideout did a top 20 Reliant K song list. However, uh, this song didn't even make the list. (laughs) Uh, Maybe someone in the comments mentioned Breakdown. I'm not really sure why it came up. But anyway, their top four are like really clearly Christian songs, followed by the song Collapsible Lung. Collapsible Lung is a really good song. (laughs) Jessica wants to lump Collapsible Lung in with the rest of Collapsible Lung. (laughs) You understand what I said. She wants to lump the song Collapsible Lung in with the rest of the album Collapsible Lung. I think Collapsible Lung, the song, is really, really good. Well, we get to continue to being our super hip, super, uh, <laughs> you know, in the know, relatable to the youngin selves because okay. we have TikToks. Oh, right. So, no, don't open in the app. I don't have China, the app. China's finally paying attention to us. They're going to hack our pod. <laughs> China's oh, going to, no. like, 
every oh, time we copy and paste something, they're going to know what we did. Oh, did you no. see that? Like in TikTok, every time you copy and paste something, no. it sends that information to the Are you TikTok making this course. up or is this real? No. Damn, and my VPN isn't on either. Oh, no. Well, I don't think if you view a TikTok through an archive, it's going to hurt. I think you'd have to download the app and be using it. All right. So our first one is, I don't know, it's that original with a tab over it. I don't know what, the, what that means, but it's just a video of a cute kitty cat. <laughs> Looking on a couch or looking around on a couch or a chair or something. <laughs> it is a cute cat. Yeah. We're both allergic to cats, unfortunately. Yeah. So we're not really cat people, but this yeah. one is adorable. It's a little black and white kitty with beautiful blue eyes. Just looking around. Cats are beautiful, but we like to watch them afar from through YouTube yeah, videos. Yeah, because this one looks super allergenic. Yeah. Uh, and then there's this one. It says, wait for the ending. And it is a girl in a little mermaid shirt dancing around. Okay, she's. I have multiple dance videos to this song as well. <laughs> she's like doing like a Vogue thing, dancing in my face thing, or what? There was nothing at the ending. I know it was just her like doing more with her arms. There was nothing at the ending. This is Layla Force underscore five on TikTok. Reliant K makes me happy. Hashtag own the curve. Hashtag viral. Hashtag viral video. Yeah. Hashtag FYP, hashtag for you, pa page. Wait, for you, leaving my body, small gestures, work it, spelled W E R K, from home. Nice. So that was TikTok. <laughs> okay. Uh, then, <laughs> for when you're totally cramming for that important uh, Reliant K exam. We have flashcards. <laughs> what? Oh, what? It was Quizlet. Little, uh, Quizlet. You know what? I will say, and maybe I could say this now because the college I used them, not the college Jessica and I went to, but the a college I went to later. If you maybe taking a test online for like your online college, maybe oh, some oh. people have uploaded answers to Quizlet. Oh no, Demi. I'm saying maybe that's happened, oh, wow. but who knows whether or not you're taking a course online oh, wow. and maybe some people have uploaded the answers to Quizlet. Oh man, Beatrice, listen up because maybe you'll get some help with that algebra. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's a Sadie Hawkins dance and then you flip it over and it's Sadie well, Hawkins dance in my khaki pants. There's nothing better. Oh, oh, oh. Girls ask the guys. It's always a surprise. There's nothing better, baby. Do you like my sweater? It's like just lyrics from different ones. That's biz- that's bizarre because why would you know the specific lyrics? Yeah, to that each song? Anchorage like has no words. It actually it actually says it actually has, says no words. has no words. So yeah, I would like to just really quickly make sure everyone knows I'm not some test cheater. But what I discovered is sometimes because the thing about online courses, and I'm not even talking about a COVID world. I'm talking about like for you. Six years ago, when I was working on my last, most recent degree, if tests are open book, like on many tests, they just they're like, okay, you're an online, you're taking a test online. This is open book. There's nothing we can, you know. So we know you're gonna have your book open. So we're saying it's open book. So I Google something because I'm like, I'm not sure about this. I should double check this. And then I accidentally come across Quizlet where the answer is literally there. I mean, and if I say me found that i'm obviously talking about some hypothetical person right our last deep dive <laughs> comes from forum.dvdtalk.com this and is the enemy trying to stop me <laughs> dodging cars uh july 10th 2002 said at 1 24 p.m if there are any fans of either here and then in parentheses, doubtful. Reliant K is doing a cover of VeggieTales, The Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. And Bob and Larry of the VeggieTales, all one word, will be doing a polka rendition of Reliant K's quote unquote breakdown. Here's the quote about it and a link to Reliant K's cover. 
Quote, in response to Reliant K covering the pirates who don't do anything for the upcoming Jonah of Veggie Tales movie, Bob and Larry have responded by covering the RK song Breakdown, and they will have it done in polka style. It will be included on the single that hits stores soon for $1.99. If you want to hear the Reliant K version of the pirates who don't do anything, click on the following link. And then... He was right because it is doubtful that anyone here is interested as there are no comments. I'm surprised there's no comments. Like, because that's why we picked this song this week because it's the Veggie Tales coming back with a polka. By the end, yes, yeah, so we referenced. This website is copywritten from 2018. It hasn't even been updated. <laughs> <laughs> so we've kind of badmouth this song this week it's just not up to what i feel like is a standard it it is a perfectly fun fun song on its own but compared to everything else it kind of doesn't live up to standard right we today we were out doing some errands and we were like oh wait maybe i should have you listen to the whole veggie tales version right now I said to Jessica as we're driving in the car <laughs> instead of like springing it on you during the podcast. Right. So we played the Larry the Cucumber singing breakdown. So much more enjoyable. We said, especially because Jessica was like, right before I played it, she's like, oh, you know, I thought I'd like Veggie Tales if we re- re- revisited it last week. And I just really, do- I just don't get it. I know, you know, you talked about it last week and why it's like the Muppets or whatever, but. I just don't care. I don't like the Veggie Tales. Then I play Larry the Cucumber singing Breakdown. And she's like, this is way better than the yeah, real Breakdown. Yeah. And I had thought that he had played it for me previously. But it was that they do a rendition of Sadie Hawkins dance that right. I did not care for. Well, I was going to mention that. Connor Dudry on Instagram, when I said, hey, everyone, we're doing Breakdown this week to sort of wrap up the Veggie Tales Reliant K suite. He's like, oh, but what about Sadie Hawkins' dance? And I'm like, what do you mean? What about Sadie Hawkins' dance? <laughs> and Jessica's seeing these messages from Connor, but she's not necessarily seeing my replies that I'm typing because we both have, you know, it logged in on our phones. Yeah, if you're trying to slip into the DMs just to talk to Danny, I can see them, <laughs> yeah. ladies. Jessica doesn't, like, Jessica doesn't get a notification about what I write <laughs> back, but she gets the notification of what you write to, <laughs> to us. So Connor pointed out that there was a, an out, like, Veggie Tales did just like how there was Veggie Rocks, where the Veggie Tales, no, sorry, where Christian artists covered the Veggie Tales, the Veggie Tales, uh, this is what Connor said. So Veggie Tales did a bunch of random albums back in the mid 2000s. They did Bob and Larry sing the 70s and Bob and Larry <laughs> sing the 80s, <laughs> which maybe we have to do as a Patreon. Yes. But they also did Christian hit music, and it has. And this doesn't. Remi- this track listing does not remind me of the artist, but they did Big House, um, they did Flood, Jars of Clay, they did Shine, Newsboys, right? They did Meant to Live, that's a uh, Switchfoot. They did Sadie Hawkins Dance, they did Baby Baby, by Amy Grant, and we actually also listened to the Amy Grant Baby Baby cover, and Amy Grant's in there singing with Junior Asparagus, <laughs> and we're like, first of all, this is a far inferior version. <laughs> Of Baby Baby. Yeah. <laughs> so then we had to put on the the album that that's on. Just as a palate cleanser. Yeah, just as a palate cleanser. And my favorite underrated Amy Grant song now is Hats. Because it's like, she's <laughs> singing about like, women in the 90s gotta wear a lot of hats. They gotta be mothers and, and lovers. And it sounds exactly and moms like that. As well. Yeah. Because I saw, I'm like, Amy Grant has a song called Hats? What? That doesn't even sound like the title of an Amy Grant song. And I listened to it and it's totally about, it's about women in the 90s got to wear a lot of hats. So uh, anyway, uh, we need to take a break. Yep. Because that's the thing we do now. We'll be We're taking right this back. breakdown. <laughs> We're taking this breakdown. Oh. Breakdown. Breakdown. Oh. Hey, we wanted to take this moment to thank all of our Patreon subscribers who have joined over at patreon.com slash Sadie Hawkins pod. Brady, David, Tucker, This Might Be a Podcast, Owen, Jimmy Eat Pod, Roxanne, and Samantha. 
If you're interested in becoming a patron of Sadie Hawkins Pod, we're doing great stuff over there. We're reading through the complex infrastructure relationship book that Reliant K totally wrote. Ooh. We review other bands that are related to Reliant K. We do. And we'll be doing most of the K for Karaoke tracks over there. Yeah, that's right. We have two, five, and ten dollar levels. Everyone who joins gets stickers, and there are other perks you can decide on. Thanks again to our patrons, as we feel really fortunate to have all of you. Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes and interact with the show at sadiehawkinspod at gmail.com. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter, both at Sadie Hawkins Pod, and call our voicemail line, which is 402-95-SADIE. Rock and roll! So you like Reliant K, do you? Well, what about They Might Be Giants? My name is Greg Simpson, and I host a They Might Be Giants fan podcast, and it's called This Might Be a Podcast. This Might Be a Podcast is a song-by-song podcast featuring a different guest every episode from normal fans like you and I, but also I've had guests such as John Darneal of the Mountain Goats, Justin McElroy of My Brother, My Brother and Me, Hutch Harris of the Thermals, Mike Park of Asian Man Records, Franz Nikolai of The Hold Steady, and Danny Weinkoff and Marty Beller of They Might Be Giants, and past drummers Dan Hickey and Brian Doherty. Search for Punk News. Or this might be a podcast on any podcast platform and you will find us. This might be a podcast brought to you by PunkNews.org. Your your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. Yeah. Curtis Blow, and I want you to know that these are the boys. <laughs> I think this was the direct inspiration for Breakdown was Curtis Blows of the Breaks. <laughs> I've been listening to more like 80s party hip hop because I was reading this comic book that I don't remember the name of right now. <laughs> <laughs> Danny has been obsessed with, uh, is it Hoopla? Or oh is yeah, it... Hoopla yeah. is this library app. Where if you have a library card, you can download these comic books and books and movies. And, you know, Canopy is another app that's specifically for streaming movies. If you have a library card, you get it for free. But Hoopla has books and comic books and ebooks and movies and everything. So um, Hip Hop Family Tree is this graphic novel series that I've always wanted to read because I see it in stores all the time. And it's really big and it's expensive and I don't exactly want to buy it. (laughs) So I finally started reading it on Hoopla, the app, the library app. And I'm learning all about like the history of hip hop and and stuff. So I'm like right now I just finished volume one and it's all about like the beginnings and the different boroughs of New York and like the party hip hop and like the like it was literally parties. Like that's how hip hop began was at parties. And so, and but I always listened to Curtis Blow before this because Curtis Blow is referenced in a They Might Be Giants song. Of course. <laughs> and Curtis Blow's like. Shout out to This Might Be a Podcast because <laughs> right. we've named everybody else that is like a, a tangentially connected to this podcast. Right. In this and episode, we played, and so. plus, we played their commercial just a second ago. Oh, right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Which you absolutely heard because we played it here live on our mixer. No. Anyway. Getting back to Breakdown, <laughs> what else were we talking We are talking about Amy Grant, we are talking about Breakdown. You finished your deep dive? I did. So, there are song meetings. I just thought, eh, let's just get to the to the, the visual part of the podcast, because who doesn't love a visual bit on the radio? So we'll get to, so we talked a lot about the VeggieTales polka version, and I'll get to that in a second. But first, let's hear the only live version that I could find on YouTube is that Troy michigan underground cafe concert and this is just more proof positive that that is this the underground scene at the underground show <laughs> yes it is that's exactly what it is just like the supertones sang of i did a meme for not mxpx memes that was like when the supertones sing underground scene at the underground show this is what they think they mean and it's an image of like a hardcore show with the crowd right up in the face of the of the band and they're all singing together like brothers in arms and then it says, and it says what they think they mean, but then it said what we know they actually mean, and it's like an underground church in like a <laughs> catacomb, like yeah, preaching against like the will of whatever <laughs> right emperor was around at the time. Anyway, 
<laughs> so the Troy Michigan show, uh, here is the only version of Breakdown being played being played played live for real that I was able to find. Did that Suntory or whatever it's called relax you? Oh, I'm so relaxed. <laughs> I'm a regular Bill Murray over here. Wow, listen to all those screaming girls. You can hardly <laughs> hear the music or see the band behind those five disinterested teens. And all the smoke in this Troy, Michigan coffee house. <laughs> They brought the foggers with them. Well, I I would assume that the fogger belongs to the church. Probably. I wish there was just like amazing pyrotechnics and stuff happening. Yeah. I think I've had enough. I think I'm I'm giving up. Saved up my money to buy a new guitar. Then I got ripped off by the guy who fixed my car. I think I've had enough. I think I'm, I'm giving up. So I'll say, this sounds so much more cool live. And I have heard this song live as I requested it sometime at Soul Fest 2000 or 2001. And I've heard, I th- think I heard it at other times. Something about this song, like, it's just like, it lends itself maybe to at least being played live as uninter- uninteresting as I'm finding it in 2020 to go back and listen to on the record. Hearing this is, like, awesome, especially because... I want to hear the next part. Okay. I was just thinking that, like, hypothetically, if they recorded at a sound check or in the studio live for that fake, quote-unquote, live version, that sounded a little bit more tight than this, for sure. Mm -hmm. But if they were just trying a little harder when they were recording it, quote-unquote, live, Mm -hmm. and actually recording it, you know, together as a band in a space with no screaming girls and then adding that sound later. It certainly could be a live, like the, like the Goldfinger live record. That's technically a live record, but they were actually f- taping it in an empty club in Omaha. We talked about that in the past. Anyway, let's hear the rest of this. Once again, life showed me a curve and it blew up right in my face. Once again, life's right on my nerves. Don't you see that I'm stuck in this place? Once again, life showed me a curve and it blew up right in my face. Once again, life's right on my nerves. Don't you see that I'm stuck in this place? All because you let me a break down. It's about as I imagined it would be. It's fun though. They kind of stink. It's hilarious and fun. <laughs> Steven Cushman is an open drummer. Yeah. He's playing open style. Yeah. I what does Dave play? Now that I've never thought about it, but I really think Ethan is an open style drummer. I just I'm trying to close my eyes and picture Ethan playing and I think he's open style. I could be wrong. I could absolutely be wrong, but now I'm thinking Dave is a closed drummer. Of course, I'm talking about whether or not you cross your arms over or if you keep your arms parallel to your body. Jessica, what do you when you played drums, how did you play? Open. Cool. <laughs> he knew the answer to that question. That was leading. <laughs> I don't think there's a difference. I mean... No. I think it looks more professional to play clothes, yeah. but I don't think it really actually matters. No. Let's hear the breakdown in Breakdown when they played it Breakdown in Troy, Michigan in 2000. I got to the bridge, but we'll be able to hear one, the second... Oh, and I never actually f- fully said this, but... I, maybe I did. But there's two breakdowns in Breakdown, and you only needed one breakdown. I think they should have cut the first breakdown out. I think they should have gone straight from the verse into the bridge sort of section of the song and mm-hmm. forgotten that first breakdown section and only kept the breakdown that ends the song. Yeah. I think it was because that, first of all, would have kept it from being a three minute and, three minute and 45 second song. And it wouldn't have, it like oversells the joke to have two breakdowns in your song Breakdown. And like hardcore songs, do hardcore songs ever have So they should have, have had two four breakdowns because they're talking about four <laughs> different breakdowns? <laughs> yes. 
But do hardcore and punk songs ever have more than one breakdown? I really don't think so. Is there? Does anyone have an uh, an example of a hardcore or punk song that has like two breakdowns? I don't think so. Stuck on the side of the road, emotional overload. Stuck on the side of the road, emotional overload. Stuck on the side of the road, emotional overload. I love this part. I love the build up back into each verse after whether is either it's the chorus or the breakdowns. I love the and then the drums come in. That's I like that. That's sweet. There's very good ideas in this song, but I don't think it pays off overall into enough of a perfect song for Reliant K, especially in hindsight. So we didn't actually hear a breakdown in Troy, Michigan that night. But you know what it would have been? It would have been them singing to their microphones with a bunch of ungrateful Michiganian kids not paying any attention. <laughs> so here is... I think they're... Aren't they Michiganders or something like Michiganders. that? Michiganders. I don't know. I was guessing. I so could be wrong. Here is out of whether you have... The version that's on the gold record or the version that's on the original record or the version that's on the 2080D record or that Troy, Michigan concert. Here is the vastly superior official version of Breakdown. It is by Larry the Cucumber from VeggieTales. For years, I wondered, was there an animation to go along with this I'm track? I'm laughing because of the what I'm looking at in this video. Well, this, up, this song was uploaded three years ago by by case griswold um and the image is reliant k and it's so funny because it's you definitely you definitely see huh they're all in onesies i'm gonna hopefully we can send this picture to maybe john schneck and ask him like do you recognize this picture because that's hoops in like a bear onesie like a brown bear and like teason with his face on Hoops' shoulder, and we he's so... He's cl- you can't see what he's wearing because it's just his face in the picture. But then behind them are other members in a Superman, Ninja Turtle, and Batman onesie. I've never seen this picture, so I don't know who the other members there are. I don't know if this is Air for Free or a John and John era picture. So I apologize for that lack of knowledge. But that's the image they put on. Larry I don't the even Cucumber. know if that's if that's Superman. That could be an Aquabat, for all you know. It's just blue. That's Superman. I can tell that's Superman. Look, that's Superman. Just look real close at it. Oh, now I can see. Now I see yeah, the yeah, S. Yeah. I didn't okay. see the S at first. I see the S now. So here is Larry the Cucumber I playing. I could not see it over Hoops' uh, <sighs> teddy bear ears. So here is Relying K. <laughs> here is... <laughs> What is his name? Larry the Cucumber. It's late. We're tired. Here's Larry the Cucumber playing Breakdown in a polka style, and it's the best version of the song. Oh, what a lousy excuse for a car. One mile to go, but I can't push it that far. I think I've had enough. I think I'm, I'm giving up. Saved up my money to buy a new guitar. Then I got ripped off by the guy who fixed my car. I think I've had enough. I think I'm, I'm giving up. Something about the horns, the polka, the it's Larry adorable. voice. It's adorable. Thank goodness it's not Junior Asparagus singing, because <laughs> I cannot stand any Junior, As- Junior Asparagus singing. <laughs> He's a perfectly fine character in the universe, but I do not need to hear any more of him singing. It's a... So, and not, not only... The guy comes in, a mechanic guy comes in later. I don't know who he's played by, but yeah. it's adorable. He's like a German auto mechanic, and he's like... He asks, Larry asks him to fix his car. We'll play a little of that. Let's play a little of that part. So it's a polka version. And first of all, as I said, 
break down the Reliant K song it approaches four minutes. This version is two minutes and 19 seconds. Perfect. Yep. How is the polka All version? All it needed to be. <laughs> yeah. How is the polka version more punk rock? And this actually removes the like stuck at the side of the road emotion overload section of the song. So it takes out that whole enemy talk that I'm starting to think it might be a reference to. It takes out the breakdowns neither breakdown or in this version of the song instead you get this little skit where this like german polka car mechanic helps larry fix his car it's like they just tighten it up yeah and here but even with the skit it's still tightened up and here's the skit uh, uh, hello welcome to oscar's auto service hi oscar i had a breakdown well you came to the right place what you got there a volvo Nope, it's a Yugo. Hmm, that's strange. Great car, that Yugo. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It just stopped. Well, let's have a look under the hood. Hmm, woo, yikes. Well then, could you hand me that plate of Wiener Schnitzel? Huh? This is like the closest we'll ever get to Weird Al doing a Reliant K song. <laughs> <laughs> So this version's really fun. I love this. As much as Jessica had a hard time accepting the VeggieTales last week, she loves this version of the song over the Reliant K version. Classic. <laughs> so we can get into covers. Nice. And here we have some just... This is really cool. And I kind of wish Reliant K would play this song more like this. This is just some like janky garage band playing the song. This is uploaded by... Lance Berg, Berg spelled B-U-R-G-E, and Lance Berg being one word. This is uploaded 10 years ago and has almost 400 views, just short of 400 views. This, like, garage band playing Breakdown with no lyrics. It is awesome. They should play it like that. Absolutely. Reliant K, and they kind of do. Reliant K did kind of, because they were so much looser live in 2000 with Steven on the drums. Reliant K is a little bit closer to that in that Troy concert. Like, this would be a great, like, hardcore, slightly angular. Like, I'd love to hear, like, some sort of post-hardcore Fugazi-esque version of this song. Like... (laughs) Like, I really want to hear it more jangly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is pretty jangly for what it is. And a little faster, a little grittier. Yeah. I like it. And I would also say, like, we've complimented the sound of the production of Anatomy. It's so good. You know what I mean? Like, the non gold and the gold version. Like, Mark, Lee, uh, Mark, <laughs> Mark Lee Townsend, he, like, and the band, and Reliant K, whereas the self titled sounded so rough. When they got to Anatomy, they sanded off all the edges as far as I'm concerned. Like, Anatomy sounds so good as an album. I I think this song would have benefited more to be heard on All Work and No Play. Like, I wish we had an All Work and No Play version of this song, even though it is so similar to K Car, because I think this song would benefit from being a little, sounding a little bit more. Or just left on the demo. Put it on the demo. Put it on the demo and leave it there. Yeah. Like Kojak. (laughs) Exactly. Well, and be uh, rad. And be rad. Because <laughs> well, all those songs have a little bit more grit, a little more edge. They're a lot looser. They're a lot faster. Mm-hmm. They're, they're more punk. So we have, again, this one came up, Signe Blanford, which is, what's her name? I don't remember her Lakeisha name. Kruger? Lakeisha Kruger. Lakeisha is like weird rival. Where this doesn't have that same, like, little intro song. 
and it doesn't have the same style of fake lyric video, but this is Lakeisha, this is Signe Blanford's fake stock music that's labeled as Breakdown by Reliant K. I will say Reliant K's song is vastly superior to this version. Oh, I was going to say this is my favorite version of the song. <laughs> I don't agree. <laughs> no, I don't agree. And I love that this is a one minute I mean, if anything... Perfect timing. Perfect timing. <laughs> Cut it down to one minute. Then we have... Look, I'm ADHD. I'm not here for the long songs. I can't sit through Deathbed. It's just not happening. You're not <laughs> holding my attention for 11 whole minutes. <laughs> Deathbed's a way better song than this, though. So, I did a little experiment this week. And for the FMVs, I had Jessica watch them with me ahead of the show. So she knew what we were already kind of looking at. You know what I mean? And instead of, like, dropping them on her live on the show, we watched them together so we kind of knew what we could talk about. And here's the the best one that we loved. <laughs> this is the Bills video. Let's see who this was uploaded by. So to describe this, basically, and there's two versions of this on YouTube, some sort of church, mission, some sort of, like, ministry, shot a music video to this song. And it's a very bizarre concept, very well shot, I'll say, but very bizarre concept where an adult lady and multiple side characters that she interacts with at different points keep like causing expenses in their lives and bills to pile up. But the bills are represented by little children, actual little children in the video wearing the shirt bill. Yeah. It is so high concept that at first I really didn't get it. Because at first I thought the video opens and we'll, I'll play it so Jessica can remember it. Oh, I, I remember it. I know you remember it. Because I had to explain it to you. <laughs> Jessica explained it to me. She arrives at the, this, we'll, we'll start playing it. And this video, this version, so there's two versions. Danny's like, why are so all bizarre. the children named Bill? And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, Danny, that's it's a problem. It's a They're bills. They, they represent all of the financial burden that the enemy has placed on them. Oh, goodness. So there's two versions. It's not ver- even a metaphor. It's in your face what it is. <laughs> this one is uploaded by Mr. Sipper 12 with one subscriber 10 years ago and 134 views. This version is probably the best version because apparently when they premiered this video for the church that night, the band played a live cover of Breakdown along to the video. You can also find this music video and they play. This also might be Mrs. Piper. Mrs. Piper. Okay. (laughs) Mr. (laughs) Mr. Sipper. Mr. I was about Stipper. to say it's a creepy username, and then I'm like, Danny turned it so I could see it, and I was like, Oh, okay. Mrs. Piper Twelve. <laughs> There's two versions of this video on YouTube. One is the video they shot with the actual Reliant K breakdown track, and this one that we're gonna watch is the version where they played the video on the big screen at church while the band in the church played a cover of the song. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So a little kid comes out of wherever this woman is picking her kid, I guess, up from... It's not, it's only, it's not actually a kid. It's children in t-shirts that say Bill. And she drops it off next to the mailbox. And then a mailman comes up and he hands her a bunch of mail. And then picks up a child with a shirt that says Bill on it and hands it to her. And she hugs the kid and takes it and sets it on the counter. Thank you for vamping, Jessica. I'm back. (laughs) And then... Her her faucet breaks and a plumber comes to fix it. And, and he then hands he another hands her child another child with a named shirt that Bill. says Bill on it. Why are they all named Bill? And I think they chose children because it, it's cutesy and funny and also you can lift them. I love it if they, and if we've never talked about it in this podcast, but I love if all the children were Bill Billingsley. <laughs> 
our 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 I R L friend Bill Billingsley, and like each time only they're only one person who listens to this show is gonna get that. DM us if you want to know all about Bill Billingsley. <laughs> I wish Bill listened. I don't know if Bill listens to the show. We'll I let him know we Bill talked about him this to the week. Show. <laughs> Just a bunch of shirtless California dudes. <laughs> It's like, hey man, when are you gonna pay me? <laughs> That's not how Bill talks. But chest. <laughs> I always think of Bill as like a cool California dude, grilling in the backyard and looking at the lady and saying, "Hey, when are you gonna pay me? I'm only fifty bucks." So that is uploaded, like I said, by Mrs. S- Mr. Spieber. It's cu- it's cute and it's it's a cute little high concept video they had there. Uh, and I'm guessing it like probably leads into the message that night, which was about like right. d- dealing with financial burden. Um, I'm having trouble with the I'm having trouble with the Google Docs right now, but I wanted to credit where you can see the properly uploaded version of it. It's called the properly uploaded version was uploaded six years ago. It's called Breakdown Bills Reliant K, and it was uploaded by Milo Otis 1000. Nice. I just gave it its first <laughs> thumbs nice. up. But yeah, it's so fun when they have the band playing there, the the worship band playing there live. That was an absolute first for Sadie Hawkins Pod. We've yeah. seen so many FMVs. We've seen so many church bands cover Reliant K. But to see an FMV broadcast on a church screen while a church band plays yeah. the cover that goes along with it that was an absolute first it was a miley hannah moment it was the best of both worlds well speaking of that oh. we can watch the hannah montana oh, that's fmv right. oh, that's so right. jessica and i discovered this and i had never found this before because it's multiple songs but it's called reliant k music melody Uploaded by uh oh spaghettio and spaghettio is not spelled nice. the way spaghettio is spelled. I'm not spelling it out. Uh, only ha- oh no, this has twenty thousand views and was Whoa. uploaded twelve years ago. And basically, this is a compilation of short FMVs to Reliant K songs, where they outline which Reliant K songs they think represent each character. Which Nightcore songs does it want you to listen to next? Is it that- wants us to listen to the Nightcore for thanks for the memories. <laughs> classic reliant k song yeah so the song breakdown represents the character of jackson from hannah montana right because he's standing there with his car or like a car i don't know if he drives he looks a little young there's probably an episode where he got a car and that's why he represents that so sadie hawkins dance is we, we missed the name. Hold on. Sadie Hawkins' dance <laughs> is Oliver's song. But those are girls. Are you sure it isn't Olivia? Olivia? I don't know. I missed it. It definitely says... Oh, no, it is. It is yeah. You're right. It, it's because Oliver's going to ask one of these girls to the Sadie Hawkins. Oh, oh. I know the girls ask the guys to the Sadie Hawkins. Oh, but he, maybe he's concerned about which girl's going to ask him. Who cares? Hannah Montana is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I love this kid's hair. It's so, uh, like, of its oh, time. And Mood Rings is Miley's song. But what's Hannah's song going to be? Because as far as I know, there's you got you got your Miley and you got your Hannah, and they're two separate characters who are completely unrelated on this show, right? Like I one mean, of them. This, a is, pop this is a compilation mainly of just the Miley character being angry at people. <laughs> 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 and then there is like the we just wasted the crayons can melt on us is Rico's song. He's apparently Rico is the Krillin of the Hannah Montana universe. <laughs> I skipped a couple of characters. Who cares? Hannah Montana. Classic, classic Christian Disney show. <laughs> um, what else do we have? So, remember last, uh, two weeks ago, Silver Bells, we had that girl who was doing some improv dancing to the song. I do. And everyone yeah. loved that. John Schneck loved that. He retweeted it. And I found the girl on Twitter. I found soccer girl Ange on Twitter and I'm like just letting you know everyone loves your video or whatever and she replied once and was like oh yeah that is me but she didn't reply after I said everyone loves your video including John Schneck well we have two different girls doing uh, interpretive dances this week so maybe they'll nice. be just as popular 
Uh, I wrote this one, Girl Goes Crazy Dancing. <laughs> okay. This is uploaded by Dazing Bug 4. And it's actually called Reliant K's Breakdown Through the Eyes of Christine. Parentheses, crazy. Uploaded 12 years ago. 118 views. And it's a girl in a very, it's a very two, mid-2000s girl. Hair in the face. With, playing air guitar. Rocking yeah. out in a hoodie. Flashing the peace sign. She's not full emo, but her hair's emo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she's just... Playing with the Tigger stuffed animal. Yeah. There's a uh, five-square poster in the background. Oh, yeah. And this is, like, the lowest compression, most cursed compression video you've whoa, ever seen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, she took one... She took a... She's had layers. So it looked like she was stripping in front of the, in the video. Uh, the shirt rode up a little bit. This is a little risque for Sadie Hawkins' pod, I must say. She's thrashing around on the floor. This is I also guess a nice she's having video. a breakdown. Oh no, this is a three minute video, but it picked up where I last what I've been watching it. <laughs> so Christine is crazy. Right on. And then we have one more dancing video. And I guess this is Oh no, we have one more FMV after this, but we have the girl in the blossom hat. <laughs> you remember this? <laughs> Jessica watched this one with me earlier. Yep. So this is uh Jocelyn Allen only has 50 views six years ago, surprisingly. Uh, th- that's even more surprising that she's dressed like Blossom. <laughs> I mean, Bart, this is just Lisa like... has friends and she's dressed like Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> this is more, I mean, the other one was just a girl, like, kind of like going wacky rolling around in a room this one is like a real interpretive dance this is like some pbs interpretive dance stuff she's like blossom meets daria meets well she's got the look then the 90s look if this is six years ago yeah meets um racially cook from she's all that that might have been that is a super then she's got the 90s look down good for her (laughs) Good for Jocelyn she's a black Allen. Dress and her hat's black, and she's got that like the, the shorter but not a choker necklace kind of thing going. Yeah, but yeah, uh, lots of hand movements. Her transition move move like is to there's put her like hands an I'm a, yeah. There was an I'm a little teapot <laughs> or something a second ago, and a hat with a lot of. Flowers I can't describe. These are all arm related dance moves because mm-hmm. it's her from the waist up. Yeah. And my phone died, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so that might well, be the end of the Well, that's Sadie Hawkins' pod for this week, folks. <laughs> and I'm sorry I can't credit them, but we found one FM. We found one FMV where it was like a bunch of people, but it th- like three or four ki- three or four like white kids like standing around their car acting upset because they're having a breakdown to the song. Yeah, remember that one? Yep. Literal FMV, classic Reliant K, literal FMV. Um, yeah, good three for boys them. pushing the car. Three boys pushing the car, doing wacky stuff. They'd like leave the car and then they'd magically be back. Oh yeah, like, they would no play continuity. like instruments in their basement, but they're not actually playing the song. Like, oh, that just... was the second one. There were two then. There were oh, two. Oh, sorry, FMVs. I thought there was another was... one where it was like perfect for breakdown. It was like he was wearing like a New York hardcore guy's hat. Like it looked like some gorillas biscuit, gorilla biscuits thing. Like I don't know what to say. Like it looked like a real hardcore band. But then he walked around like he was Frank Sinatra, like crooning you while he was lip syncing to... These are all things that I'd love to show you, but first of all, my phone died, and second of all, we're an audio podcast. So, you should definitely check out our Instagram and Twitter, which are Sadie Hawkins Pod. We already plugged that I at the know, but I'm just reminding people. So as this <laughs> podcast slowly breaks down, <laughs> we'd like to thank you for coming along this ride with us as we break down... And don't let you know who, he who must not be named, <laughs> stop the things you like. You mean J.K. Rowling? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>